everybody. Welcome back to Tech Safe here in Worcester, Massachusetts. I'm so honored to be in the studio with our producer, Adam. And I am the director of Massachusetts for Safe Technology. And I want to welcome everybody to this opportunity to learn about what's happening in our world today with the immersion we find ourselves in with all of today's wireless radiation exposures from the cell towers to the utility smart meters to the 5G small cells that are going up around our communities and sadly often outside of our front doors if we don't have good zoning code to protect us and our own personal devices. So we know the science is very clear. We don't have a science issue today. What we have is a political issue and a lack of knowledge through mainstream media. So we're so honored to do this Tech Safe program here out of Worcester. And I'm delighted to invite our new guest into the studio via Zoom. His name is Hank Allen, and he and his colleagues in Idaho have worked very hard to build out Idahoans for safe technology. And let's hear from Hank and see what they've been up to. Hank, welcome. Hi, Cece. Thank you so much for having me on your, your show. And thank you for everything you do for, for this cause. You are just a, a warrior. And uh, God bless you for everything you do and the effort you put forward. I know it's a lot. You've been at it for a while. So thank you so much. Well, it takes a village, and we're so grateful that we have Idaho. We've recently been talking with Pennsylvania and California and Hawaii and Virginia. And I want to bring in everybody from around the country and see if we can keep the needle moving in the right direction. So right. I know you're a dad. I know you're a husband. I know you're a business owner. How did you get involved in the wireless issue? <laughs> well, I didn't choose it. It chose me. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of a long story, and I'll, I'll try Go to try it. to make. You got this... twenty five more minutes. <laughs> Do I got twenty five minutes. So it all started. I, I live in Idaho now, but I used to live down in the Bay Area of California. And back about fifteen years ago, it came it came up. Um, I uh, was I had a long commute from from Aptos up to the Bay Area of San Jose, and they had just uh, down in California. And I was I spent about two hours on my commute driving from my house up to where I was working. And when I hit this commute, I was having these heart palpitations. And my like my, my heart was jumping out of my chest multiple times on my commute to work. So I went to Stanford Hospital and checked myself in the hospital, telling them I got some kind of weird heart heart issues. I was thought I was having a heart attack. And they kept me in for, for two days and, and did all kinds of stress tests, look at my heart. And they said, you know what? You have chronic fatigue. You're just stressed out. You're working too much. Stop drinking coffee. And if, if it gets any worse, go see a, a psychologist. You're crazy. So, um, and when I was in the hospital, oddly enough, I didn't have one heart palpitation. They had me hooked up to all the, the monitors, and my uh, my heart was perfect, no no misbeats. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I guess that's all all you can do. So I jump in my car and I start heading home. That the the, um, the hospital was was where I was working. So I had to drive home that day, two hours to my house. And sure enough, I drive home. And I start getting heart palpitations again. And I'm all, something's going on. And so I go home, I start thinking about it. And over like the next week while I'm driving, I'm noticing these heart palpitations are happening at the same point in my commute. I go around this turn on the road, I don't have heart palpitation. And I'm all, son of a bitch. What is this? I go, it's got to be environmental of some sort. I had no idea what it was. So after I kind of realized and I kind of marked down, I take mental notes of where these, these, these places were. I pull over on the side of the highway and I start looking around. I'm looking for anything like sewer gases, trees. I, I didn't know what was causing it. And I'm um, taking just mental notes at each one of these places. And the first place I noticed there was a pine tree that was disguised cell tower. And I'm okay. There's a cell tower here. And then I go up to the next spot where I have these heart palpitations jump out of my car. I'm on the freeway. Cars are zooming by me and I'll let you know, every spot I was having these heart palpitations was a cell tower. Oh my goodness. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, these things are killing us. What is going on? Mm -hmm. So I go back, tell my doctor, hey, cell tower is doing something. And he looks at me, says, you're crazy. Tells my 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 wife, your your husband's crazy. These things can't do it. They're um, they're not, you know, they're below all the FCC limits. Nothing's gonna happen to you, you're safe. And I'm like, no, seriously, I'm not faking this. I can't fake this stuff. So that kind of put me into the whole uh, uh, alternative medicine, searching for, for answers and solutions, what's going on. And through 
finding a, a mold and Lyme doctor and a lot of testing, I find out that I have the dreaded HLA DR gene, which means I can't flush mycotoxins that are like a, a biotoxin produced from mold. And um, what happens with RF radiation from cell towers, Wi-Fi, cell phones, all this stuff, it causes mold to react and release. It's exponential, the amount of mycotoxins, which are the toxic um, defense mechanism for mold spores, and um, release these things at this exponential level. And my body can't flush it, so I get poisoned when you mix mold and RF radiation. Oh, my goodness. Uh, first of all, you may be able to go back to your doctor, perhaps you already have, to let them know that the EMF, or Electromagnetic Fields Medical Conference, although the opportunity to earn 24.5 continuing medical education credits has expired, everybody in the world today, citizens as well as healthcare practitioners, can attend the EMF Medical Conference at no charge online. Libby Kelly, who ran that conference, has now put all the videos, all of the doctors, scientists, building biologists, engineers, nurses. I was honored to speak there on state and local policy, but all of that training is now available at no charge. People just need to go to Massachusetts for Safe Technology, go to our resources page, and you will find a link that pulls up a document that has all the lectures in that course, and you, from one click, can go right to the lecture that interests you most. Maybe it's the cancers, maybe it's the infertility, maybe it's the heart palpitations. <laughs> um, but it, there's no reason for doctors not to know today, but there's, there's no way for them to know that this resource is available, so it falls to you and I to keep informing our doctors. When I told my doctor, and you know, I was so excited, woohoo, you can go get trained on this. She yeah. says, well, like, Wireless is everywhere. And I went, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't make it right. Um, yeah. And Dr. Lisa Naj, who was the co-chair of the first EMF medical conference back in 2019, she has an environmental health clinic out on Martha's Vineyard. And she became so ill herself many years ago. And she, like you, Hank, had the mold toxicity. And she knows that, you know, if we have mold exposures, maybe even from childhood, from somewhere where we used to live, moved on from, but it's still in the body. So I am so sorry you went through that. But when you talked about driving by the highway and seeing that cell tower and realizing that's when your heart started going jiggity, uh, for those who want to just sit down with their loved ones and learn more about this, there is the award-winning film Generation Zapped. And there's a gentleman in there from, I think he's from California, maybe down in Los Angeles, Jamie. And he was having the same experience with the cell towers. He would drive by and his, you know, everything in his system would start crashing. And he figured it out. And I love that you said that the hospital you pulled into was Stanford, right? Yep, Stanford Medical. I was down at Stanford University. They were doing um, a screening with the United Nations Film Festival. They wow. chose Generation Zapped as part of this. So when people say, oh, you know, it's all within the federal guidelines, they need to know that the FCC has now been sued for ignoring 11,000 pages of evidence of harm. The courts found that they were arbitrary and capricious in determining that today's level of radiation is fine. They basically sent it back to the FCC and said, you need to protect children, you need to protect the environment, the elderly, and anybody who's already developing these electromagnetic sensitivities. So it's been almost three years, and the FCC has done nothing to respond to the court order. So that's why I love interviewing folks like you, Hank, because we're the ones who have to teach our folks around us what is going on. And today, you know, I fell down this rabbit hole a decade ago. And for two years, I had nobody I could speak to on this. And today, we have incredible resources at every level. We have the medical conference. We have Tech Safe Schools website that tells our schools what the biological risks are, you know, all this fallout they're seeing in the kids, the headaches, the nosebleeds, the nausea, the dizziness, the anxiety, the suicidal ideation. We cannot keep radiating the brain the central nervous system and the immune system and expect that it's gonna go fine. So, um, okay, so 
those are all my touch points on what you had to say. So let's. <laughs> I just set you up, but you had a whole bunch there. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, so let's get back to your story. You. So you figure out that you have a co infection with mold toxicity and radio yep. frequency radiation exposures. Yep. Then what did you do? So tell my doctor, well, what do I do? And he put me on treatment protocol. This was a Richie Shoemaker uh, protocol. Um, and uh, it helped. And he said, I'll get you about 80% there. He's like, I can't get you 100% well, but I was really sick. And, um, and he did. He got me about 80% well, but I still wasn't thriving. And uh, living in the Bay Area with all of the cell towers, I just couldn't survive there. I was, I was lethargic, brain fog, joint pain, muscle pain, everything else. So he says, you need to move. You can't live here anymore. So I, I started looking. And uh, he says, move to Canada, go way up in the woods or go someplace. Uh, I think it's in, you know, back in the, the Midwest where they have uh, radio towers and, you know, there's no EMF. And I, I got a family, I got three young daughters, my wife, and they're like, uh-uh, we, want, we, we don't want to do that. So, you know, we started praying about it. And we found this place up here. It's called Eagle, Idaho, up there near Boise, Idaho. It was a rural town. We found a little farm where we could come up and, and basically had to put my job down in the Bay Area. I was a general building contractor down there and came up here and, and tried to find a start a new life. And we found a little two acre farm where the nearest cell tower was two miles away. Being on two acres, we had separation. So I didn't have to worry about Wi-Fi from my neighbors. I could, um, you know, I completely hardwired our whole house with cat five cabling so that we could still have a modern lifestyle. We had, you know, all of our internet. So there was no Wi-Fi. Everything came in through uh, coaxial. It was awesome. And uh, it was my sanctuary. It's where I came to heal. We bought some cows. By the way, that was awesome. You know, I could have a little farm. We had pigs, got the kids in 4-H. We did chickens. Completely different than my, my lifestyle down in California. But, you know, you, you, you have to make change. And we did. And uh, my health was getting better. And then we were here probably, it was, I think it was about two years. And I get a notice in the mail that uh, Verizon was wanting to put a macro cell tower 600 yards behind my house. Yeah. Oh, Hank, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Brutal. So, um, so let me on. just fill in a little gap there. What the science sure. tells us is that there's a uh, death and neurotoxicity curve that starts coming down at about 500 meters from residential areas. So within 1,640 feet, we see higher death rates, we see higher cancer rates, insomnia, anxiety, depression, you know, the whole nine yards of radio frequency toxicity. It doesn't actually catch up to the normal population statistics to almost double that. So. Um, they say where children are involved or people with existing health conditions, you should be at least a half a mile away from a cell tower. So go ahead. Or more. Or if you're more. In direct line, if you're in direct line of sight to a cell tower, that's, that's the worst. So you can see it with your eyeballs, you know, have trees or buildings between you. It gets really, really, really hard, at least for me. Yeah, no, so because those um, signals are programmed to go for miles. I mean, like 20 yes. miles, 25 Absolutely. miles. And anything they're going through, they're damaging along the way. So thank you for that. So this, this part gets lengthy, but I'm going to try to zoom through it for you to give you the overview. So um, we get the application and we go to a local, uh, I think it was a library. They were, they were holding a, a pre-con meeting with, with Verizon and the, and the cell tower builder. And um, there were some neighbors there that were concerned about this. And we, we, we started talking to them. And I said, hey, I, I'm sensitive to this stuff. I moved here to get away from these cell towers. You can't put this thing in my backyard. You're, you'll kill me. And um, there was probably 20 other neighbors that were there. And they, there was one neighbor, that, uh, a daughter had leukemia. And there was other people with other health conditions. And they're like, this is in our backyard. We moved out to the country to get away from this stuff. We don't want it. And they continued down the path. So we had to go to our local county commissioners, a bunch of hearings, um, and we convinced our county commissioners with an expensive attorney to deny this application for this new cell tower. They deny it. And of course, the applicant, the, the tower applicant, takes it to a federal judge. He overturns 
the, um, the county commissioner's ruling because we did not, we failed to challenge the, uh, the RF study. So they, they do like a, a provocation study. That, that it's basically just a junk piece of paper. Yeah, it's a theoretical, a theoretical yeah, number. It's that not there, even that real. There's a, a, a gap in cell phone coverage, mm -hmm. right? So we didn't address that. We didn't have an engineer to look at it. And the judge says, nope, there's a, there's, there's a gap in coverage and therefore um, issue the cell tower permit. Oof. So now they have the application to go forward. Well, I've already run from this stuff. I, I'm running out of places to move to. Mm -hmm. These cell towers are coming in everywhere. There's no place to go anymore, mm -hmm. right? So, um, you know, we love our house. We have a little farm. Our kids are in school. They're now in, in high school. We can't move. So we um, we stay put and just say, well, let's see what happens. There's a couple trees between us and the cell tower. Hopefully, you know, I've gotten better and now I'm going to be strong enough to uh, to live here. Well, well, I, I wasn't done fighting either. So we were we were still ready when those trucks were going to show up to start the um, the construction of the cell tower. We actually had all of the community, all of the members of our community. We were going to you know, go out and protest mm -hmm. and um, barricade the, the entrance and, you know, just um, nonviolent resistance. Yeah. And the day we had the lockdown order for COVID, the day they announced that stay home lockdown is when the trucks showed up. And we're sitting here in our house, all the neighbors, we're, we're thinking that we're going to die from the COVID and this truck show up. If that's not a core, I mean, I'm not a, 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 a conspiracy theorist, but the, the timing and for them to be declared already a uh, essential worker and their trucks show up. So they start drilling. So, again, I lost that opportunity to to uh, to resist. And um, they started the construction on it. And it was probably it took them about a year and a half to get the, the tower, cell tower up and everything else. And. Um, my wife and I made a decision. Well, let's just just see what happens. Don't worry about it. Don't let the stress get to us. Let's just continue living our life. And if if it goes on and we don't have any, I don't have any symptoms. Well, praise God. Mm -hmm. So now we go out about a year and a half. I think we were in in February, and I was upstairs in my second story bedroom, um, laying down. I was talking to my wife, and all of a sudden my heart starts racing, and it feels like it's going to jump out of the back of my chest. And I'm all, what is going on? And I never felt this before. And it doesn't go away, it doesn't go away, it doesn't go away. And I start getting cold and I feel like I'm gonna pass out. I'm all, I gotta go to the hospital. And of course, my wife and I, we were kind of having a, uh, a discussion at that point. So she thought I was making something up and she goes, whatever. So I get in, the ho I get in the, my car, I drive down to the hospital, I walk in and they, they, the lady checks me out. And they rushed me to the back of the hospital, and I was an AFib. I've never been an AFib before. And I'm like, holy cow. So um, they cardioverted me um, and uh, gave me all kinds of drugs to get my heart back in the right right place. And I, I, at that point, I just thought, oh my God, I'm getting old. I'm, I'm now 50, I'm having, you know, this is what AFib feels like. Well, holy cow. But it was, it was gnarly, and I thought I was gonna die. Oh, Hank, I am so sorry. You know, it's frightening that you mentioned that COVID lockdown week. You're yeah. perhaps familiar with the Pittsfield, Massachusetts neighborhood here, Shacktown in the Berkshires. Same thing happened. Verizon illegally sighted a cell tower on top of this neighborhood. And that first week of the pandemic, when everybody's in lockdown 24-7, the little girl comes downstairs and goes, Mama, I have a really bad headache and I feel all buzzy inside. Well, that was the start. She got sick, her sister got sick, the mom got sick, you know, they're vomiting in their beds, the dogs Ugh. vomiting, and 17 neighbors and children in the Pittsfield neighborhood had to abandon their homes because they got so sick. And just yesterday, one of the gentlemen who chose not to abandon his home he went away in an ambulance a week or two ago, and his funeral was yesterday. When he got to the hospital and opened him up, he was riddled with cancer multiple places throughout his body. So my heart just breaks for what you and your family have gone through. So you said that you still had some fight left in you. 
So my guess is that was the day the cell tower got turned on. Yeah. Well, so um, I come back and, you know, and of course I'm thinking, well, maybe the cell tower goes on. So after I kind of recovered and two days later, I walked in my backyard and I had, um, again, I live on a farm and I had bought a beehive. So I put a beehive and when I was trying to locate this thing on my, on my property, I actually put the beehive between the cell tower and my house. And I kind of thought of like the, the canary in the coal mine, you know, maybe that'll tell me something. So I go down to check on my beehive and the bees are decimated. My entire hive has been, it been nuked. Killed all the bees, wiped them out. Got uh-huh. on our website, all the video for it, right? And as I'm checking on my beehive, I go on AFib again the day after. Well, you are certainly not alone. Um, there's a gentleman out on uh, Chappaquiddick here, which is where Ted Kennedy used to have a place. Um, he experienced the same thing. His neighbor put a cell tower up on their property, and it threw him into AFib. And the irony, Hank, is that when the EMTs came, they couldn't even get a signal to make a call to call ahead to the hospital to say they were going in. So there's so much radiation hitting him. And ironically, it's not even connecting the cell service. He was just getting fried. And out in Pittsfield, where um, these neighbors became so sick, there was another gentleman who had been feeding himself and his family off of his own gardening for years, for 20 some odd years. The first year that cell tower went up, there were almost no pollinators. By the second summer, there were none, and he had to hand pollinate all of his crop. That's what I'm finding. So it's become kind of like a a biology experiment, a really sad one, that in my yard, in the back that faces towards the cell tower, there are zero bees, there's nothing. And I've I've shielded my house to protect my, my family and myself so I could live here. And on the front, on the on the, the, the shaded side of the house, away from it, where the EMF is quite a bit lower, I have bees. But nothing where the where the radiation levels are higher. Oh. It, it's, 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 it's it's night and day. Anybody can come out and look at the property, especially uh, we just got through with um, our, our spring uh, bloom mm-hmm. with all of my fruit trees. Mm-hmm. And it, I mean, beautiful, gorgeous blooms and nothing. You come in the front yard, and there's a couple little, you know, dandelions in the lawn, and you can see bees down there, down low, getting away from the radiation, and they're oh, they're still alive. Oh, so, so, so the cell myself. tower is still there. Oh yeah. So, so now, um, after going through all of this, um, again, my wife doesn't want to move. She she loves where we are. My kids want to stay here, and. Um, we got to do something about this. Mm-hmm. So I, I was, I was a general contractor. I'm a realtor now. That's mm-hmm. I had to change profession because, you know, obviously as a contractor, you can't choose your, your next job. And, um, most of them are either have Wi-Fi in the houses or next to cell towers. Right. So being a realtor kind of work. So anyways, I, uh, we decided to remodel the house and, um, completely redid everything, put on the, the, uh, film, on all of our windows mm-hmm. and put the white shield paint like three coats on all of the walls that face the cell tower and i was able to drop the radiation in our house by about 15 decibels and that brought it down to where i'm still you know there's still radiation in the house but it's considerably better and it's manageable to where i feel like i'm not tingling and don't have the headaches and i, I can manage inside the house wow but and, you're something of a prisoner in your house because you can't really go Oh, Enjoy your God, yard the way you used to. The nightmare. And just, you know, I'm on two acres and trying to manage our, our farm and mow my lawns. I, I can't tell you the inconvenience all this has caused, right? Yeah. And, you know, thank God there's some trees between myself and the cell tower. Mm-hmm. So in the wintertime, when the leaves fall off the tree, it's horrible. The radiation is, uh, I can't even go in my backyard. But as soon as the, the foliage comes back on, on the trees, it knocks it down, I think about, about five decibels to where I can go out and at least mow a lawn, but I have to put my, my vest on that has the, uh, the shielding on it. Mm-hmm. So I don't uh, go on AFib, just trying to you know, keep up on my, my yard work. Oh, it's, for uh, sakes. It, it's horrible. Okay. Oh, so now, it's so we've got about two and a half minutes left. All right, so let me give you the big one. Yeah. So um, Bobby Kennedy, mm-hmm. who's running for president, mm-hmm. 
that's who you want to vote for this year. <laughs> and uh, he heard about my story and got his uh, his uh, head attorney that deals with cell towers, uh, Scott McCall. He's mm-hmm. out of uh, down in Texas. And uh, we just filed a uh, an ADA accommodation lawsuit in federal court back in January to uh, to try to um, get some relief and either I, I want the whole cell tower taken out, mm-hmm. but at, at very minimum to block a couple sectors so that that radiation doesn't come across my property. And we're waiting right now for a federal judge to um, either accept the case or to get it. it might, I might get thrown out of court. I don't know that the, the industry, the wireless industry is trying to get this thing um, uh, dismissed. Yeah, they so, are so powerful. But the Americans yeah. with Disabilities Act for two decades has recognized electromagnetic sensitivity, the Jobs yeah. Area Network, or JAN. Yeah. Um, they've already got recommendations for how to offer accommodations in the work setting. So there's a lot of really good resources out there, and we are so grateful for the work that Children's Health Defense and Attorney yeah. Scott McCullough and his team with Miriam Eckenfels garcia everything that they're doing. Um, I know Robert F. Kennedy Jr. gets a bad rap in the media, but that's because mainstream media is by and large owned by these companies that own the telecom yeah. companies. So um, folks will find a lot of good information out at Massachusetts for safe technology. And Hank, we wish you all the best in everything that you're doing. And we want you and your wife and your girls to be as safe as you possibly can. Um, I look forward to co-hosting our monthly free public education webinar with you in June. Um, We'll probably do that the first week of June and we'll get that announcement out at the beginning of the month. And then we look forward to meeting with one of your other colleagues in Idaho for the second presentation. And we'll see if we can get Dave to come in and do an interview with me as well. And I think he'll be able to fill us in a lot on what's going on politically in Idaho and what, um, what people can be inspired by. So if you had 10 seconds to tell us your parting words of wisdom or encouragement, what would they be? Get involved. I, there's a, a national call. CC's got a lot of stuff going on. Your local uh, community. I'm sure there's other people out there if you're suffering from this that you can get involved with. And, um, you know, don't listen to the mainstream media. Figure out the truth and you got to vote. You got to get involved. And if you have more, if you want to find out more information about my story, you can go to Idahoans for safe technology.org. Scroll down. You'll see a bunch of different posts on there. I have my whole story documents the bees. I have maps on there showing where the cell towers are, how the energy comes through, what it was doing. Um, all of the neighbors, I put a next door, um, ad out. There was, I think 12 other neighbors that all went AFib around the same time the cell tower was turned on. So it's not just me, it's our whole community that's being affected by this. Um, And we all need to work together because they have these cell towers on schools. I can't go to my kids' graduations. I mean, there's so much stuff when you you find out that you're sensitive to this stuff that you can't do. And uh, for me and other people like myself, our worlds are shrinking as this is rolling out. And if we don't push back against uh, the wireless industry together, um, it's going to be too late here pretty soon, and there's not going to be a place to go. I hear so, you. So thank you. God thank bless you. you all, and thank you so much, CC. All right, everybody, do your best to have a tech safe day, and we'll see you back next time at WCCA TV. Tech safe. Take care, everyone. Mm-hmm.